Good afternoon, YouTube. Beautiful day outside. I got some some wood split and just had a nice visit with some neighbors and uh, ready to do the portion here. This is a uh, bow, which means uh, to go in. And that stems from uh, Exodus 10.1 when uh, it says going into Pharaoh. As a partial overview, we had the uh, plague of locusts. We had the plague of darkness. Um, we have the, the uh, Passover. We have the uh, plague of firstborn death. The trip to Canaan begins. And then the consecration of the firstborn, the firstborn uh, Hebrews. So, you know, I was just, I was just thinking, I think too much probably, but uh, Exodus 12, 37. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. And as I understand, that 600,000 is men. So uh, as I understand, the uh, the rabbis think there was about 2 million people there, including children and, and maybe even more with the... Uh, the Egyptians that went on with them. So, I, so anyhow, I was uh, I was pondering on the state of the Hebrews psyche as they begin their journey to Canaan. Uh, so you know what? What do you think that was going through their head? Well, I think on one hand is elation. You know, they were getting out of out of Egypt, right? Out of bondage. Um, Elohim had triumphed over the Egyptians and their gods ten times, and uh, that culminated in the death of the firstborn uh, Egyptians and their animals. And uh, Elohim was back, although it was the people that really left uh, through sin. But uh, So they're feeling elation. On the other hand, they're probably having angst uh, you know, over the future. Um, you know, they, were, they knew they were going to Canaan, but uh, they're going to new territory they'd never been before and probably wondering what was going to happen to them. And then they come out against the uh, Reed Sea and uh, the rabbis say, you know, people were even thinking about suicide because they're like, what did we come here for? We should have went up north through the wilderness. But, you know, the father was going to show his strength over his creation to include, you know, the Egyptians and to build faith in the, in the Hebrews. Um, and maybe they were just feeling, you know, confusion. Elohim had disappeared, their view, a couple hundred years ago, and, and now here he was. You know, would he stay with them? All throughout the Tanakh, you know, the people are a little bit, uh, they have a lot of anxiety about, it. is Elohim really with them or not? And it's, it's probably a good thing. And then they were probably, you know, they're probably feeling fear also. Uh, fear of the Egyptians, you know, would the Egyptians follow them? You know, if they were caught, would they be executed? And, you know, throughout throughout the Tanakh, or throughout the Torah, there's always there were always a few naysayers. Oh, we should have stayed in Egypt with the leeks and the melons. So, but, you know, in, in Sunday school class <laughs> or wherever, the Hebrew's anxiety and behavior is often somewhat, these are my words, ins insensitively and callously portrayed hypocritically as a lack of faith. And it was a lack of faith. Um, I mean, if, if people were following the Father's perfect will, they would have known he was going to take care of them. But, you know, we're people, we're humans, we have our insecurities because of sin. But... Uh, but the father did the plagues to build up the faith of the Hebrews as well as to demonstrate, you know, the worthlessness of the Egyptians' gods. But, uh, so we can, you know, we can read about them and, and if it wasn't to apply to our life, why would we bother to read about them? 
So what is what is going on on our side? You know, as followers of the Most High, um, there's some stuff going on in this country. National Democratic Socialists have taken over the House of Representatives, and you know that's uh, that's what Nazi stands for is National Socialist. We have an unpayable national debt, almost 20 million, and maybe another 22 million if you've been following the professor from Michigan who had, who found a lot of misappropriated money. Uh, we've killed 41 million unborn in this country alone. We have exported our savage butchery to other countries. Um, in the 60s, and, and this trend started long before the 60s, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a stake in there. It would, in, this, in the 60s, it was free love. Then it was acceptance of homosexuality. And now it's transgenderism. The uh, number of males who said they are really a female trapped in a male body has doubled in the past seven years. We are confusing our school children. Instead of counseling our children when they get infected with this disease, they are catered to. How can anyone send their country, excuse me, how can anyone send their children to a government school? Beyond me. Do we think Yahweh is going to spare this country? Is uh, Donald Trump riding in on a white horse and he's going to right all the wrongs? And I'm beating the same drum that I always beat here. But if you talk to the average evangelical or Christian, uh, they say Jesus is going to save them. Um, and they mean eternally and from any discomfort on this planet. And most don't even follow the news. So I, then I have to ponder, you know, the patriarchs were closer to the father than I ever will be. Um, yet, you know, Yahweh himself came down and made a covenant with Abraham. Yet Abraham in Egypt misrepresented his relationship with Sarah out of fear. Not once, but twice. Esau in Egypt misrepresented his relationship with Rebka out of fear. Jacob thought it was all over for him and his tribe as they met Esau. And Jacob had just been counseled by the angels. So just how is it that the average Christian has so much more faith than the patriarchs? You know? Jesus is going to take care of. So my conclusion is... Um, the faith that the vast majority in this country have is not based on scripture. You know, I, I probably said this before, but the word, the Hebrew word for faith is Strong's uh, 530, and it's imuna. And it means that you believe in something so strong that your behavior has changed. And a lot of these people, there's, you know, there's no behavior, there's no behavioral change. I know I'm talking about being perfect, but, uh, a lot of people, in my opinion, who say they have faith don't. So, what do we need to do? I mean, on a corporate level, we, I, need to pray for our people, um, by the people in this country, and the people in this world. For Deuteronomy thirty-one through three to come to pass, and that is. It shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither Yahweh thy Elohim hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul. That then Yahweh thy Elohim will turn thy captivity, and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations, whither the Lord thy Elohim hath scattered thee. So, uh, I don't know how much longer, you know, this giving in marriage and, and, uh, and eating in Matthew 24 we're going to have, and driving new cars, and having heated homes, and air-conditioned homes, but... Uh, you know, we need to, uh, we, I, I need to get on my knees.
So uh, I thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you next week.